Hey guys, it's Saru! Ha 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 ha! It's me. I have a brand new guide for you guys today for Terra Console, a guide of which there are many, many variations around the internet, mostly around its PC counterpart. <sighs> but let's carry on with this amazing original content. So Velik Sanctuary Hard Mode is almost pretty much the same as normal mode, except for a few key mechanics. And that's why I'm here, you adorable chalupas. Before you continue with this video, if you have not done normal mode or watched my normal mode video, please do not watch this until you do, because it will not make sense. I will not be repeating the mechanics that are pretty much the same in normal mode or attacks because I it, yeah uh, I, I have no explanation I just don't want to so for this video I will only be noting the differences and what they do so revive nightmare darken so the fire outside the arena now hits you for a hundred thousand damage per hit so um so yeah all of his attacks are basically the same, hits in and out, donuts are pretty much faster, and they hit for a lot more, you pretty much die. So that's pretty much the basics. However, for special attacks, there are some interesting differences that you guys should know, if you don't know already, and if... I don't know, maybe you already know. So when he says, FOOLS ALL OF YOU, following up with his normal three swipes, and then he says two other phrases, and so on and so forth, it's kind of the same as normal mode. Now the only difference is that in normal mode, he'll only do it to the tank, which is easy for us, hey guys, but for hard mode, he may target different players. Now the way that you'll know it's your turn to be slapped around like a little bitch, is he'll basically do the first move, and as he's going to do it, he'll already target the next player, so it's basically to prepare them to move on. As he does that move, he'll basically go to the next target, already so just keep an eye on that it's pretty much simple these swipes are iframeable so if you have tons of iframes like a warrior for example then by all means just ignore all of this now for dark heart itself which is basically when he stabs the ground and he slaps everybody with his scream and he gives everyone a debuff unless you iframe is the same other than the fact that the bleed hits for a little bit more and you can basically die because it hits you and then you're basically dead by the time the debuff is gone so keep that in mind so before i continue the pylons around the arena are a bit different this time and so as you know you have six pylons all around and they're all lesser pylons now they're not going to change into greater ones at 50 percent that's the difference Instead, they will remain all lesser. Now, here's something interesting for you guys to keep a note of and know, is the fact that once you break one pylon that's a lesser, when it comes back later on, it will turn into a greater one, requiring you to have at least four people on it with the AoE, which you only get at 50%, with four players on it and blow it up. Once you blow it up, when the pylon returns later on, it will have a blue shield and it will be invincible and you cannot break it. So my suggestion for you guys is to decide on a pattern for my group. What we did is we went clockwise or counterclockwise it really just depends on voice chat i don't know we just kind of went with whatever at that point so once we have the suffer mechanic with one player gets the aoe we break the lesser and we stay there for a bit then he'll do his scream his big aoe and then we'll go to the next one and just so on and so forth even under 50 percent when all players have all an aoe underneath them i suggest just breaking one even if it is a lesser one so you don't sacrifice other pylons so you want to keep moving around the arena clockwise or counterclockwise it really just depends this is just my suggestion i usually don't give out suggestions for these guides but you guys have been asking for them so hopefully this helps and you are pretty limited on pylons so you know it is kind of a little bit of a dps check a low one but a dps check anyways so that's pretty much the only differences for darken now i should add that when he's under 50 percent and he says the whole master thing when he swipes to the left or right without using the actual phrases what he's going to do is do it to the other side i'm i'm afraid to read i'm not gonna lie I'm scared. <laughs> I thought he was gonna do like a move. Shit! Oh god! Oh! <laughs> so if he does left, he'll do also right afterwards. And they're pretty fast, so if you're on the left side, you just want to iframe. You don't want to go to the right one because he'll just slap you across the field. Now to Kurion. Admittedly, Darken is probably the hardest boss in this particular dungeon. For some reason, I have no idea, but Dekurion isn't too shabby. Now the attacks are pretty much the same, and he only has a couple of differences. Which is why I'm here, guys. So, as you know, sometimes he will say, I call upon the power of Dark Manor. I don't know why I said that. And create a pizza like mechanic around him. This is where you'll need to go into the blue slice on normal mode, and that's your safe zone. The only difference for hard mode is that the blue slice is no longer there, and now there is a gray slice, or rather a colorless slice. So, that is your safe zone. The purple balls around you, once they reach up to four balls going around the arena, have a chance of Decorion screaming, Boom! 
and then they will explode. Now, you can iframe this explosion, but they do 200,000 damage if you don't iframe or if you're not away from it, so you want to get out as fast as possible and disappear. The last mechanic that is different from normal mode is the cage mechanic. Oh, I know you guys love this. Now, technically, if you have high DPS, you can just skip this mechanic altogether, plus res baiting with your healer. But it's a pretty easy mechanic conceptually. So the text will appear on the screen, Sanguine Curse affects your abilities. It'll probably go away after a second, but on the icon itself, which is a little demon icon, if you do Shadow Sanguinary, then you know this mechanic already. You'll see on the top right of the icon, it will have a one through four number. That means the amount of stacks that you have. Now it's the same thing where you memorize the save zones, but the only difference here is that you need to be hit by the amount of stacks you have. So let's say you have, I don't know, four like I have in this video. What I need to do is when he does his pattern, after he's done, I need to be hit by the red zone four times. And once I'm done with those four stacks, I simply go back to the memorized save zone. An easy way to remember this is once you see the number, just look at the red zone. So for me, four, I look at the four red zones and then I go to the fifth zone, which is going to be the safe one to remember. And that's it for him. That's literally the same. Now Lacken. Lacken is a special little muffin that can drive you insane. So the boss is the same except for a couple of mechanics. His attacks are, like I said, the same except for one. Now you may remember when he does it in normal mode, he does a shield smash on the ground, then he slices with his sword twice, then he does a cone AoE in front of him. I mean, you probably don't know because it doesn't really affect the back if you're a DPS, but if you're a tank and you're watching this, then you know he does a cone AoE in front of you. Now that's replaced with this mechanic instead. He will do the shield smash, which is dramatically slow, and then follow up with these little wave attacks that go from the inner to the second ring to the third up to five rings. Now you can just iframe and avoid being put into the air altogether, but if you do get hit, I suggest being close to him when he does this so your air time is shorter than the rest. The further rings you're in and you get hit by, the longer in the air you're going to be, which I guess is kind of cool if you're into that kind of thing. So if you have ever done Ruinous Manor hard mode, when she does Fate in Hand, or for some reason I always call Hand and Fate, she does an inner, then outer, and then another outer. Similar mechanic in that sense for the iframing. Now for Begone itself. Now it's much, much faster and you need to be on point. There is a chance that during the fight, usually during Soul World, he will not say Begone at all, and you'll just need to be paying attention when he slices his sword purple or red in a ballerina form. So that's really just all you need to know about that, it's just faster, and when he does Soul World itself, he will not say Begone. He may say it, but most likely he won't. Now in terms of Soul World, after 90% health at any point during the fight, he can just decide to go into Soul World. The mechanic is pretty much the same, the healer needs to iframe back, then do regression or play of exhaustion depending on your class and that will break the shield itself now the mechanic will be reversed in terms of their functions not the order so if you're doing debuff spread gather for example if you're going into soul world they're going to be debuff spread being all together and then gather just not cleanse now the cool little thing is like within 90 seconds give or take he'll get out of soul world so when he's going to exit soul world he's going to say ha oh, not, not bad. bad and what the healer needs to do is iframe out as if he was doing entering soul world and then use your sleep ability not your poison ability. So Priest would be Ishara's Lullaby, or Mystics would be Sonara's Dreams. For some reason, we haven't been able to do Sorcerer's Mind Blast to work for some reason. Apparently it's supposed to, but we haven't been able to do it, and I can't confirm whether or not it does work, because every attempt that we've tried has just not worked. So once again, once he exits Soul World, and he says, ha, not bad, you want to iframe backwards to avoid the little laser circle thinging, and then just sleep him. If you fail to sleep him, he will wipe the whole party. That's pretty much just it. There is one more thing, and I know you're probably going to ask about the Soul Intrusion Gauge. Now, essentially, every time he does Soul World, it will fill up by 20 points. Now, once you're out of Soul World, it will not fill up. So, if it fills up to 100 points, that means you have 5 times for him to do it, which is about 13 minutes, give or take, for that fight. I'm going to be honest with you, I have no f***ing idea what happens. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you just wipe, but I have no idea. I haven't had the pleasure of figuring that out. I don't have the patience to wait 13 minutes for that mechanic itself. So... I mean, if you end up finding out, just let me know in the comments below. And I'm pretty sure it's a wipe. But like I said, I honestly don't f it know. And that's it. The rest is pretty much the same as normal mode, which you can check in the description below if you have not watched that video. I hope that helped. And if it did, put a thumbs up. If it didn't, put a thumbs up. You can't escape it, baby. Make sure to subscribe and click that adorable f bell to know when I upload a brand new video. Much love and as always, till next time, friends.